Now, there are neurotoxins in the dairy supply, too, uh, which may explain the, the link between milk consumption and Parkinson's. High levels of organic, organochlorine pesticide residues are found in milk and the brains of Parkinson's patients. And other pollutants like tetrahydride, so quinoline, which is actually what scientists use to try to induce the disease in primates found in the milk supply, uh, particularly cheese. Um, so maybe the dairy industry should do these toxin screenings of milk. Good luck with that. Now, you could always just not drink the stuff, but then what about your bones? That's a marketing ploy. If you look at the science, milk does not appear to protect against hip fracture risk, whether drinking during the adult years or drinking during one's teen years. If anything, milk consumption was associated with a borderline increase in fracture risk in men. This suggests a partial explanation for the longstanding enigma that hip fracture rates are highest in populations with the greatest milk consumption. This enigma irked a Swedish research team puzzled by studies again and again had shown a tendency for higher risk of fracture with higher milk consumption. Well, there is a rare birth defect called galactosemia where babies are born without the enzyme needed to detoxify the galactose in milk. So they end up with high levels of galactose in their bloodstream which causes bone loss. So maybe the researchers figured, even in normal people that can detoxify the stuff, maybe it's not so good for the bones to be um, uh, consuming all that galactose um, all day. And galactose doesn't just hurt the bones. That's what scientists use to cause premature aging in lab animals. They slip them a little galactose, shorten their lifespan, oxidative stress, inflammation, brain degeneration, just like one to two glasses of milk's worth of galactose a day. Um, well, we're not rats, though, but you know, given the high amount of galactose in milk, recommendations to increase milk intake for the prevention of fracture could be a conceivable contradiction. So they decided to put it to the test, looking at milk intake and mortality as well as fracture risk to test the theory. A hundred thousand men and women fall for up to 20 years, and milk-drinking women had higher rates of death, more heart disease significantly more cancer for each daily glass of milk. Three glasses a day was associated with nearly twice the risk of death. They also had significantly more bone and hip fractures too. More milk, more fractures. Milk drinking men also had higher rates of death. For some reason, you never see any of this in any of the milk ads. I don't know. 